Hello and welcome to another episode of Trash to Track. In this episode we're going to be looking at this Railroad 9F that's been sent in to me by a chap called Mike who states that the loco is a non-runner so we're going to put it on the track and give it a battery test to see if we can uh, ascertain exactly what's wrong with it. With the Railroad 9F the tender also provides electrical pickup so I'm going to connect that to, to it as well. And once all of its wheels are on the track i'm giving it a battery test and as mike stated it is absolutely dead there's no movement in this model whatsoever so we're going to have to take it apart and have a look at what is going on inside just before i do that i'm going to put this adapter on this battery just to put power directly to the pickups uh, uh, pressing against the wheel backs but again there's nothing so it's going to have to come apart and we're going to have to look at what is causing the problems in this 9F. Now to remove the body shell on the 9F you have to undo this screw at the rear here under the foot plate. And then once that's done you can lift the body off. I have just noticed now just picking them off there there's rather a lot of fluff and hair wrapped around every axle on this 9F. As I was saying once that screw is off the front clip disengages although on this model it was rather tight and then the body and chassis are separated and you can see that this chassis is the fairly modern dcc ready version these have generally got good motors in them and i've got a 9f that served me well for qu quite a few years now so now the body's off i'm just making sure that nothing absolutely nothing is picking up power to that motor on this on these under frame here so there's obviously a bad electrical contact somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert the model upside down and I'm going to remove the base keeper plate. And I'm going to have a look at all the axles and the pickups to make sure they're clean. As I've got a feeling I have to find in that fluff on the front bogey that there may be fluff and gunk all wrapped around the axles and wrapped around the pickups on this model. To remove the chassis keeper plate you just remove these three screws. And the whole thing just lifts off complete with the pickup uh, assembly as well. This front screw proved to be particularly difficult to get out. I think it was slightly cross-threaded from the factory. But once that's all done, you, as I said, you can lift it out. And there are a lot of pickups on this model. So I'm surprised that there's no electrical contact. And it's nice to see that the wheels are actually sitting in nice proper bearings in the die cast chassis there it also looks that that center driving cog there is not in correct alignment with the actual worm gear from the motor so we're going to have to look at that a bit later on as well as it appears to be moving freely on the axle so now that that chassis keeper plates off i'm now going to remove the side rods from one wheel at a time by removing these small hex nuts and I'm going to clean up the wheels individually as I go. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with a lot of crank pins and pieces of side rod all over my workbench. And by working on one wheel at a time on this 9F, I can put these uh, side rods remain in the correct positions. As I suspected, just moving that bearing there, you can see that there is a lot of debris and detritus all wrapped around these axles. So every single axle is going to have to come out and be thoroughly cleaned up. I've got a feeling that it was all this that may have been pushing the contacts and the wheels away from each other, preventing electrical pickup. So I'm just cleaning the chassis block there with a cotton bud and methylated spirits to remove any debris. And then the wheel is put back in place, aligning the brass bearings up with the hole. And then I reattach that uh side rod and then move on to the next wheel and in this time lapse footage you can see me working on each individual wheel removing all that build up of fluff and fibers from each of the axle bearings and then i put each wheel back into place as it was before and refit the crank pins this center wheel is flangeless and actually has the crank pin that drives all of the other wheels and you can see again how much fluff is actually around this crank pin this is the only wheel with the um, with the crank pin that uh, sticks out like this. As, as I said, this has the piston rod and everything attached to it. So there was even more um, fibres on this wheel than the others. The 
Flangeless middle wheel of a 9F is entirely prototypical. The real 9Fs had flangeless centre wheels to allow them to negotiate point work and curves. It's also this reason that you never see a 9F on the main line anymore, as having a flangeless wheel on a 9F on the main line has in the past caused them to ride up over frogs on points. And this gives a derailment potential. But now, back to the model, you can see now that I'm just cleaning the rest of the chassis block with the methylated spirits and a cotton bud. I'm just slightly straightening that uh, piston rod there that had got a slight bend in it. And then the wheels are all dropped back in place, aligning all the bearings up with their correct holes. Once all the wheels are back in place and the bearings are all correctly lined up, I'm going to put some lubrication on the bearings in the form of some modelling oil. You really don't need a lot of this. It, a small amount of oil does go a long way on these models. But now they're all aligned correctly and the side rods, etc. are straight. I'm just going to clean the workbench. Um, I'm going to give all the pickups a wipe over with a cotton bud and meths. Just to uh, remove any dirt and grease that's on them. And make sure that they are, especially those front ones, they are springy and will be in contact with the wheel backs. This is uh, what I mentioned before, just putting a small amount of lubricating oil on each of those bearings, just so that it runs a lot smoother and uh, you, don't want to, you don't want it dry. And I, it was dry after I'd cleaned it all. So now putting the chassis keeper plate back on is slightly trickier as you have to put it back on and then gently put the pickups behind the wheels without bending any of that thin brass. It's very easy to bend and snap off. And I've just noticed that that pickup has come off the tender drawer bar there, so I, re I will replace that later on. And now putting the battery on the wheels, you can see that the wheels are spinning nicely. So it was just a case of dirt and debris buildup on the pickups and those wheel axles. However, it becomes apparent when running uh, with the battery, even when I was holding the model like this, that the middle wheel was slipping. And as I mentioned earlier, that cog didn't seem to be aligned with the gear. And the cog has actually split and is free spinning on its axle. Splitting cogs has become a bit of a theme in the last few trash to tracks. I've done a, a fair few models and a lot of them have had these split gears. So I had to buy a new wheel set from eBay for a 9F. And as you can see there, I just shake the bearings out of the way, that I can't move that cog with my fingers. So I replaced the entire wheel set with this brand new set and I've chucked the middle one but in the bin as it is virtually useless i've kept the others as spares but this 9f now has been fitted with a brand new set of driving wheels once that's been done i'm just going to put a very small amount of silicon grease on the worm gear as i had oiled that before but the grease had um the factory applied grease had gone hard so when i put the new wheel set in i actually removed it and now giving it a battery test the chassis seems to run a whole lot better now I'm going to reassemble that valve gear and the first thing to go on after the side rods is this washer followed by the piston rod from the cylinders then the linkages go on the linkages again with Hornby models fit on a rectangular cutout in the in the uh, valve gear and then the crank pin is put on and tightened up with my hex nut screwdriver. Once they're all in place, and I repeat this for the other side, I give the model a quick battery test again to make sure the rods are all correct. Nothing is catching, there's no clicking noise, and that the chassis runs uh, well before putting the body back on. These hex nut screwdrivers really are a godsend. I've had mine a few years, but you can buy them from Expo Tools. Just tightening up that um, crank bin there. You can go relatively tight with these. I mean, don't over tighten them, obviously. But they do seem to self-lock in the uh, screw thread on the crank axle. To replace the front pony truck, there's a small spring that goes in that hole. And then that sits on a lug on the front pony truck. This is then held in place with my finger. And then I put the screw in and screw that back into the chassis block. The front pony wheel on this model doesn't pick up any electrical, um, any electrics for the motor. I'm just going to use the implies just to pull that axle out 
because again, the front axle is also wrapped round with fibres. So I just use those pliers there just to push the wheel off the axle and then give the whole front pony wheel a good clean up with a cotton bit of mess to remove all the fibres and dirt. And then I replace the wheel by simply press fitting the um, wheel back onto the axle. And then once that was done, the back to back was checked with my digital calipers. Using a small amount of super glue, I'm going to glue the brass part of the pickup back onto the plastic tender drawbar. The brass clip had worn the plastic over time, so it just needed a very small amount of Loctite just to hold it in place um, so that it doesn't come away in future use. As I said before, I've got my own 9F um, in my collection, and having rebuilt this one for Mike, I actually got mine out of storage just to make sure none of the gears or anything had split on mine, and I was happy to find that mine was still in good working order. To refit the body shell, you just engage the two clips on the front of the body, and it is a rather snug fit, and you just gently wiggle the chassis, and it falls back into place, and then you can re-secure it with the screw we took out at the start, which sits under the foot plate. This screw sits in a brass collar, that is mounted in the plastic moulding, so do not over tighten that as you will end up breaking the plastic moulding. Now I'm going to look at the tender on this 9F as the railroad 9Fs, um, especially Evening Star, they are prone to Mazak rot. The tender pickup system has been built around the old Ringfield motor casing and it is known that these can crumble over time. So I'm going to strip this down and clean it and just make sure that there's no signs of Mazak rot in this. Looking at it, it doesn't look very promising because the end wheel and middle wheel do not turn very freely. It takes some force to get them to turn around. So I'm going to strip this down and take the wheels off and see if everything is straight and true. To remove the pickup system, there's a simple screw in what would have been maybe a, uh, a weight screw hole when this was a tender drive thing. And the whole pickup ensemble comes off in one, and you're left with this Ringfield motor casing. So, looking at it, I can't see any metal cracks in it, although that middle axle there does appear to have swollen and, uh, the middle bit, and it's trapping the axle somewhat. So, just easing the wheel off the axle, I'm going to remove these tender, and that flew off with some force there, but don't worry, it didn't get damaged. It was just very, very tight in that hole. I'm going to remove all the tender wheels and just check that this chassis block is okay. So I've got a straight edge now and I'm going to check and I can just see that there is a slight bend in this chassis block. It isn't cracked or anything, it's just not quite true. And you can see at the top there, there is a gap between the straight edge and the ruler. And also the metal bit in the middle there was so tight it was trapping the axle. So I'm just going to use gentle finger pressure just to try and bend it in place. And it, I am genuinely surprised at how soft this metal was that has made up this old Ringfield motor mount. While the wheels are off on the tender, I'm going to give them all a thorough cleaning. And I'm going to replace them back in the axle holes in that tender block. And even that was pretty tight in there, even though there's brass bearings in it. It just wouldn't go through correctly. It just doesn't seem to be in alignment properly. But having had some work, I now have a free rolling tender chassis. The middle axle, which isn't in a brass bearing, I opened up with a round file. Now that that's all been done and the wheels are now free rolling, I'm going to put a small amount of oil on each of the bearings on the tender wheel. And then that makes it even more free rolling. So now at least I know that this model isn't creating any drag for the loco part i'm going to replace the uh, ringfield motor mount in the tender chassis there it only goes in one way and clips in just as it would a ringfield tender drive and then the sh um, tender pickups were given a quick clean the pickups pressed behind the wheels and everything screwed back into place it is worth noting if you've got a railroad 9f um, just keep an eye on it, especially the earlier ones, because this tender is a real problem with Mazak rot. I have had one before where I've took the tender chassis apart and the whole thing's just crumbled. Luckily enough, old Ringfield motor housings from older tender drive models do fit, 
and I have fit an older Ringfield chassis to my tender. Now that that's all done, it's free rolling. I'm just making sure the pickups are in alignment. The body shell clips back on and is secured with one screw underneath where the coupling was. The coupling is then put back on. And I'm going to give this 9F a quick battery test now. And I'm very pleased to see that it's been returned to service. As remember when we first had this, this wouldn't move at all. I'm just lifting the wheel, loco wheels off the track there. And with all the wheels off, that proves that the tender pickups are working. For a budget model, the Railroad 9F isn't really that bad. It's not, it lacks the finesse of the Backman model, or even the newer Hornby one, but for its age, it really isn't bad at all, and it does have a good motor in it. If you've got an engine you'd like to see featured on a future episode of Trash to Track, please email me at dansmodelrailways at gmail.com, and we'll have a look at getting it sent over, and it may even feature in its own episode in the future. I'm going to leave you now with some shots of the 9F running around my layout on a charter rake. The pulling power of this railroad 9F really is quite good. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. And I'll catch you again in the next episode of Trash to Track, which will be along soon. Bye for now.